Right. Okay, let's see. Tier 5 ranked listing. Fujin. Well, that's an easy S tier. Fujin is hilariously broken. It's got, what, 5.4k M conceal. It's got giga broken torpedoes for the tier. Uh, it's, it's, it's a kamikaze. It's like, it's literally hilariously overpowered. Easily goes here. Omaha is complete trash. Probably D tier, honestly. Probably an easy D tier. Omaha doesn't really do anything well. It doesn't have particularly press. In general, being a good cruiser at tier 5 is pretty challenging, and Omaha most certainly doesn't, doesn't fit that. Omaha has no armor, has no guns, it's got a gigantic citadel. Like, if you look at this thing, it explodes. This ship actually used to be able to overmatch itself, because the bow armor used to be 13 millimeters, or was, no, was it 10 even? So you could literally overmatch your own ship. It was giga tragic. And Omaha is actually one of those ships that you can intentionally detonate. Omaha detonates exceptionally easily because the magazine is located outside of a citadel in the front of the nose. So Omaha has a tendency to detonate because any HE shell that hits near the nose basically hits this uh, ammo rack. So Omaha is one of those ships that I've intentionally detonated. It's, it's giga bad. Omaha actually has good guns. Yeah, but it can't survive. It's, it's good guns if you get to sit behind an island and far. If that's the requirement for a cruiser at tier 5, I don't know. New York? Holy power creep. Poor fucking thing. D tier? Honestly? D tier? What, what does New York have going for it? The guns are awful, the armor is awful, the speed is awful. Um, I'm not really good what it's... Uh, I don't think it's really good at anything, New York. Oklahoma? Isn't that basically a New York? Isn't that basically a New York? Oh, it's secondary New York. Really? That sounds awful. That sounds worse, because you can't secondary... Like, this This has no, nothing going for it. No, I'm just going to put in the... If there were any planes around... Texas would be bumped into C, but considering there's not, so the whole gimmick of the ship doesn't exist, so then it's a D tier as well. Gremiashi, easy S tier. Easy S tier. Gremiashi is the OG overpowered destroyer. Uh, good gunboat, good torps, good conceal, very fast. Gremi can citadel half the cruisers it fights as well. Uh, it's just very, very good. It does what, 40 knots at tier 5 or some shit? Gremi is like giga powerful. Ohotnik? Maybe B tier. Ohotnik is fun memes, but it's actually a gigantic ship. It's a long ship, and it's got very short torpedo range. Um, it got some hard-hitting volleys and some hard-hitting guns, but if you're forced to fight other DDs, it's it's so easy to torp this thing and just hit it in general. It's a long, wide boy. Uh, Podvoisky. Pretty shit. I don't think it was quite as not quite as shit as the Omaha, but pretty shit. I think Podvoisky was here. I think Kirov Kotovsky. I don't remember which one was which. But I think Kirov kind of goes here as well. General tier 5 cruisers aren't much to brag about, so... Kirov guns are pretty nice. Kirov can citadel other cruisers very easily. Or was Podvoisky a destroyer? Oh, that was the gunboat destroyer, but that was before they had any gu gun gun power you're right you're right at tier 5 I guess B tier then we put it in B tier then um, but Kirov had Donskoy guns Kirov literally had Donskoy guns at tier 5 I think it can basically citadel every single goddamn uh, tier 5 cruiser easily and it can even citadel some you can even citadel some... Uh, was that Mikoyan? Oh, that was Mikoyan. Kirov is pretty decent, though. But generally, you don't want to play tier 5 cruisers. That's the TLDR. You don't want to play tier 5 cruisers. I don't think there's a single cruiser I can put above B. So why would you play a tier 5 cruiser? They just don't do anything. Uh, problem with low tier cruisers is they don't have utility. They don't have heal or sustain, and they don't really have enough DPM yet to be a significant threat, so they're kind of just victims. Furutaka is probably the one that could make B or A. Besides that, eh.
Kotovsky, we throw him down here. Krasny Krim, oh Jesus, Krasny is dog shit. Krasny is like a D tier. Krasny Krim is, is a tragedy. It has a lot of guns, but I don't think... Didn't it have like hilariously tragic uh, shell velocity and had no pen at all? It was like the OG meme ship. Yeah, 130 millimeter guns, that was it. Kamikaze, it's the same thing as the Fujin, it's broken. Mikoyan, yes, C tier. Murmansk. Ah, uh, it's basically an Omaha, but it's it's supposed to be identical, but it's actually not. It's got the special Soviet treatment, so the guns are actually much better than Omaha. Um, so maybe we put it in C. It's it's better than Omaha, but it it I mean it's still a. Eh. October Revolution is very strong. For a battleship, that might be S tier, honestly. It's it's hilariously tanky. Oh yeah, it had 8 chem tropes instead of 4.5. It's A or S. I don't know if I can put a battleship in S tier at, at this tier, though. Is there battleships that S tier? Maybe Julius Cesar. That's the only thing. I think it's an A tier. Piotr Veliki is pretty goddamn good as well. Hilariously tanky. Not nearly the gun performance of October, though. I think Veliki is like a B tier. B or A? S? Didn't Vel wasn't Veliki slow as shit? I remember Veliki being hilariously slow. Twenty six point five. Oh, never mind. It's actually pretty goddamn fast. That actually gives it a significant edge. Then the armor is of course hilarious because it's Soviet, so you take zero damage only if you get Citadel. It's gonna be giga tanky. It handles pretty good. Well, the base conceal is 13.3. That's pretty nice as well. Does it have Soviet DCP? Oh, it does Soviet DCP. Okay, never mind. Velki is actually gonna be pretty strong. It was faster than I remembered. I think we put this in A tier as well. The broadside is insanely weak. Yeah, it's basically a guaranteed dev strike. October Citadel can be hard to hit. Uh, Pyotr Citadel is not. Pyotr Citadel is not easy or hard to Pyotr Citadel is not hard to hit it's basically guaranteed dev strike Russian BBs T22 man that's probably one of the worst DDs at this tier like probably one of the worst DDs maybe C the tugboat T22 the tugboat I mean still a DD which makes it more useful than this ship but I mean ugh ugh Königsberg, you need some hands for this thing, but this might be a B, B tier cruiser. Königsberg can sit things and Königsberg can farm a lot of things. It's pretty good actually for the tier. It's got good DPM and it's got built in penetration thanks to being a German. Königsberg might actually be a B tier cruiser. I probably wouldn't bring it to ranked ever anyway because it's just gonna goddamn explode, but it still has good guns. It's got good guns. It's, it's got a lot of range, and it can, it's got enough ballistics to use that range. The problem is, of course, if you get they get looked at, you just go... Pow. Der Flinger? I actually like Der Flinger. It's like a B-tier battleship for me. Tanky. Tanky and uh, pretty frustrating to deal with. König? It's not quite as good as Der Flinger. Mm, maybe Koenig is a C tier battleship. I remember the guns being very, very frustrating. I think guns, I remember guns being very frustrating in the Koenig. Acosta? Did you have the fast reloading smoke in the Acosta? Acosta is probably a B tier destroyer. I think you had the fast reloading smoke in Acosta. Do I remember that correctly? That, that alone makes it like just really strong. Like it's literally some of the best Best smokes you can get. I think I think a custom kind of suck dick otherwise. Thank you, Ata Anders. I think it kind of sucked dick otherwise, but oh yeah, it's got the fast short burst smokes. That's hella good. And the concealment isn't that bad. The custa is gonna be pretty good. I think the, it had horrible firing angles and and just pretty awful guns, but it has the fast smoke. We probably put that into B tier. 
Emerald? <laughs> yeah, that's a dog. That thing literally explodes. Minikaze? It's like a much pre-nerf, or it's like an after-nerf Fujin. Mm. Mm. B tier, maybe? Minikaze isn't that bad. I mean, the problem is you can't really compete with the premium uh, destroyers, because the premium destroyers are hilariously overpowered. So I think Minikaze is like a B. Exeter! Now that's actually a pretty good cruiser. Could it be the only A tier cruiser we have here? Exeter is actually pretty damn good. It has 203 millimeter guns, it had a heal, it had a hydro. It has a lot of things going for it, especially against tier 5s. It explodes, but it's got sustain. And it has hydro. It's got utility and sustain. I think Exeter is going to be an A. An A tier cruiser for me. Hawkins. Now that thing was dog shit. C tier probably. Iron Duke. Royal Navy French. Yeah, it had special French acceleration. I think Iron Duke is a C as well. Hawkins is awful. Yeah, it's still not as bad as Omaha or Emerald, but it's awful. Iron Duke has that HE going for it, which is kind of frustrating to deal with. I don't think it's quite... not as bad as these guys. Hawkins armor is shit. Yeah, it is. I think we put this one in C. Agincourt. Wasn't Agincourt pretty good? Was the edging court the one with the fair bit of guns and shit? Secondaries? Edging court was pretty good, I remember. Edging court was like a strong battleship. For, especially when you're only fighting other tier 5 battleships. I think it's like an A tier BB. With no CV around, it's A or S. There's not going to be any CV, so I think it might be an A or S tier battleship. Agent Court the tier 5 brawl was awesome. Hmm, yeah, but you got to remember this is ranked, there's not going to be any CVs, it's tier 5 only. I think Agent Court might even be an S tier. S tier battleship. I'm thinking it might be an S tier battleship. I think it's going to be like... This one and Julius Caesar are going to be my S tier picks. It's going to be very small scale. Bra you're actually going to get to brawl. you got to understand. It's going to be, what, 6 versus 6 with no carrier? I think it's going to be pretty good in this game, man. Tiger. Shh, I don't remember what Tiger did. What was Tiger's thing? I don't remember what Tiger was. It had the torpedoes. It was a battle cruiser. Wasn't Tiger fast? That might be pretty good to have at that tier. I think it had a big speed advantage over most of the other ships. Yeah, 30.5 knots. Holy shit. 30.5 knots at this tier. 12.6 conceal without a captain. Damn. Thank you, Nathan. True, true, true. Yeah, it has the torps and it's it's so fast for the tier. 30.5. 30.5. Tiger is probably like a B. B tier battleship. It's going to be one of the fastest BBs there. It's going to be... Congo still beats it? Yeah, I agree. Congo might be A tier, honestly, for this. Jaguar. Sirocco. Shit. Jaguar. You don't really have the good guns at this tier for the French yet. I don't think Jaguar was that good. I don't think you have the French saturation either. I think it's going to be... Jaguar is going to be like C. You don't have main battery reload booster. You don't have honestly anything really that makes the French DD strong at this tier. You're kind of just suffering. Most HP for the tier, that's good. But I, you have no smoke. And you don't have the saturation or speed to, to live without smoke. Yeah, I think we can put it in B tier destroyer. It's still a DD that survives. It's still a survivable DD, which is never bad. 
Mm. You have the saturation. It's better realer than Sirocco. What was Sirocco's difference? I think we put. I think Sirocco had. It was a nerfed Jaguar, wasn't it? So Sirocco had the reload booster, but it's tier four. Hmm. I'm probably gonna put it with the Jaguar. It's like if you don't have other picks. Emil Bertin. That's all. Emil Bertin is interesting. If you shoot AP at it, you will never ever get any damage on it. You will get nothing but the pants. But on the other hand, HE blows the ship out of the water. Hmm. It's it's a giga squishy cruiser. It's a giga squishy cruiser, but it's almost too squishy. I think it's it's a giga fast. It's giga fast, but I think the problem is how much value are you going to get out of that? I think Emil Bertin is still going to just blow up too easily. I think he's just going to blow up too easily. You have no DPM, you have no sustain. I think we're going to put that into C tier. Bretagne. That's a lot of guns. And that's actually, it's pretty tanky because it's pretty dreadnought. The accuracy is all over the place though. I remember not hating Britagna that much, actually. It's going to be a decent DD hunter, the Emil, sure. Well, well, how fast was Britagna? How fast was Britagna? Was that, wasn't that the guy that like moved at potato speed? Where the hell is Britagna? Here it is. 20 knots! Oh, Jesus. Oh yeah, okay, I don't even care what else you got going for you. 340s, yeah, but oh yeah, I'm putting that into D tier. 20s, that, that, that's a fucking liability in ranked. You can't even dodge torps, like you're just gonna suffer. You're just gonna suffer too hard. Maestrale? It's an Italian DD, so I'm already tempted to throw it into D tier. Does it have any saving grace? Does it have something I'm overlooking? I think it might be like, it's it's basically dog, complete dog, I think. Mutsuki, it's going to be pretty stealthy. Wasn't Mutsuki worse than Minakaza though? I kind of get that vibe. Mutsuki had what? Mutsuki had the 8k torps 2x3. Minikaza had the 3x2 7km torps. 39 knot 6k conceal. 39.46. They're pretty identical, pretty similar, honestly. Minikaza was the better ship. Why was it the better ship? Didn't have better guns? 4x1? Oh shit! Mutsuki had 2x1 guns. Oh fuck, that's why I didn't like Mutsuki. Yeah, that suffered. That's actually suffered. It had 2x1. I think one was in the bow and one was in the stern. And then they're shooting like like starship like what are they called um from star wars those got them got them white clad dudes they shoot like those guys yeah it's actually dog um it's still selfie and has decent torps so i put it into c tier but like it has no firepower stormtroopers that's what they're called i'll put it in c because it's it's still a dd and DDs are going to be strong genova what did genova do what did genova do I don't remember. Two and freeze guns? That's two or three guns is nice, but it didn't have any it had Oh was this the one that had the tragic reload? Like the Giga Tragic Reload. Wait, wait, wait. Cruisers or I think this is the one that had the Giga Tragic DPM. Oh, it had no HE either, was that it? Oh, yeah, it has. Oh, wow. 20 second base reload, 25.7 second turret reverse. That's pretty brutal, not gonna lie. That is pretty brutal. Yeah, I mean, you get some Urmach in, sure. Eh. 
It's not as bad as some of these. I mean, I'm a bit feeling a bit bad about Omaha here in D tier now because Omaha does have a lot of DPM. It has a lot of DPM. Not, it's hard to get. The full, you don't get the full effective DPM. Like the effective DPM value is misleading because it's got like guns in weird positions and you don't really get to use all of them. Uh, maybe it isn't actually. Maybe it deserves to be here. You can't really use all your guns. But it's. I remember it being pretty. F yeah, fire starter. That's what I'm thinking as well. Can we find his fire starting capacity? Damn, it's pretty fucking good at starting fires. Maybe I put the Omaha into... In ranked, yeah. But I mean, there's going to be a lot of... There's not... You got to remember, there's not going to be planes that are going to spot you in the Omaha. So I think, I have, I think I'm going to move this thing into C tier. Because there's not going to be planes that... One of the big things that fuck you in an Omaha... You find a nice island, you park behind it, you start lobbing your shells over the island, and then random ass plane spotting comes in, and you get smashed. But that's not gonna happen. Flola, after remembering all the dog shit tier 5 cruisers, reconsiders Omaha. Basically. Basically. We move this one up here, and we move the Murmansk up to B. That's, that's fair. That's fair. That is fair. This is a fair, fair development. Monte Cucole. What the fuck did Monte Cucole do? Suck? Didn't do anything else. What the hell did that thing do? It has... It's pretty... F it's fast. Monte Cucole is fast. Monte Cucole is giga fast. It's actually one of the faster cruisers, I think. How fucking fast is Monte Cucole? No, no, you guys are... I think it's good. Like, how good is it gonna be at hunting down DDs? How fast was this fucking thing? 37 base. 37 base. God damn. Huh. That's pretty fucking fast. 11.3 can see it. No Hydro, though. And no armor. It's, it's going to be decent at dealing with... Decent at dealing with um, DDs, but I'm not sure what else it's going to do. No range? No one has range at tier 5 cruisers now. They suck. It has no guns. That's kind of it. It has very little guns, and I think it has no HE. It's all SAP and AP. So something goes nose in against it, and it does seal 0. It's Monte Cucoli. Okay, thank you, Brunacchia. I got it perfectly now. You're welcome. You can't start fires. Yeah, with all the armored battle crew, all, all the armored uh, dreadnoughts at tier 5, not being able to start fires is actually really fucking bad. I think I put it into. I think I put it into C tier. Because I feel like if you can't burn down these giga armored things crawling up at you, what the hell are you going to do about them? Nothing? You have to be able to burn them. Conte Cavour. That's like a C tier BB. It's not as slow as. It's not as slow as um, these guys. I think here. Julius Azar is an easy S tier. That's the only two S tier BBs we're going to have here the Agincourt and the Julius Azar. In fact, S tiers are only going to be basically premiums. That's just tier 5. If you don't pay, uh, you suck. Shan Wei, um, Shan Wei. That's a that's a destroyer. Why is Julius so good? Because it has incredible dispersion, fast reload, and incredible dispersion. Hmm, Shan Wei. I think the, in the Pan Asian smokes, those are pretty good. Decent conceal. Didn't have deep water torps as well. Mm, I think that was going to be pretty decent. That might be like a B tier. Chunking is going to get chunked. But it had smoke, which is already an advantage. Did I have slow turrets? How how slow were they? I don't remember, John. Wayne. This is kind of like a refresher course on the tier low tiers. Chun, wait, here we go. What do you have going for you? 
Single 6-6. Six, six. 37 knots. Hand handles are like a dream. Good smokes. Speed boost. What kind of torps do you have? 16.7k torps. Jesus. At this tier, these torps are deadly as shit. Deepwater torps. Because Hydro isn't nearly as prevalent as this tier as it is uh, in higher tiers. Um, 10.9 gun. What's the turret verse? 80 second turret verse. That's not even bad. That's not that bad. The torps are giga short range, though. So you can barely stealth torp, but you get 6k conceal with concealment expert, and then you can barely stealth torp. So pretty hard to use, but pretty fucking powerful. Yeah, stock torps are shit. Upgraded torps are much better. Hmm. That doesn't seem bad at all. That doesn't seem bad at all. No, I think... Uh, Chanwei deserves B tier. It, seem, it seems like a solid pick. Chunking though. Does Chunking have smoke? Chunking have smoke. I think it does, surely. It's, it's not like the gimmick of these things. Smoke is advantage. Go to equipment. Yeah, there we go. Three smokes. No fucking health. Incredibly poor range. It's got 9.5k and deep water torps though that hit like a truck. It's pretty stealthy. And it has the smoke. And you gotta remember, wh why do I highlight smoke so highly? Why do I talk so much about the smokes at tier 5? Because in tier 5 there are no radars. There is no radar counterplay to smokes. Ra smokes are really, really, really fucking powerful in low tier rank. Because the only way you can see through that smoke is with hydro. So. Smokes are a giga-powerful tool in low tier rent. It's not nearly as important later on, but at tier 5, smokes are so fucking good. So, what kind of DPM does this thing have? Cruiser. What was it? Let's see. Uh, 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 uh. Chung King. Wow, it actually has really shit HE DPM. Really? This thing has the same HE DPM as a Furutaka. Wow, really? What's the reload? 3x2, 9.5 second. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck, that's awful. So it's entirely torpedo reliant. Yikes, that's... No, DPM is so important for, for these low tier fuckers. Uh, it's like... Shit, I don't know if it's D or C. I, I think I'll put it C for the smoke alone. But... <sighs> fuck, it's so bad. Like, Jesus, it's so bad. Sheesh. That's actually bad. Like, really bad. I think I put it C for the smoke and the torps. But yeah, that's pretty brutal. The smoke is so good, but everything else, like, yikes. This B. Oh, that's the little, little shit. He has no smoke. That's, that's gonna suck. He has no smoke. I don't think he had much in terms of gun power or torpedo power either. It's gonna be kind of... I think it had really low HP as well. 9.6k health. 8k M torps that do 6.2k a pop. 9.5k gun range. He gets a heal. That's pretty nice. 89 HP per second. Bruh. That's pretty brutal. Bruh. Bruh. Emerald had a smoke. True, true, true. I'm, I'm tempted to move up Emerald for that alone. Tempted to move up Emerald. For the smoke a lot. 6.6 on seal. It's fast, but man, it has no disengage. What's the firepower? The firepower seems pretty shit. Let me look at the firepower. Bisby has 64k firepower, 64k HEDPM, which is less than the T22. Okay, that, that's pretty tragic. What about torpedoes, torpedo DPM? It's got the second lowest torpedo DPM. The lowest torpedo DPM is the Maestrale. Bisby is the second lowest. Holy shit. My god, this thing is a pile of shit. It has no utility, no firepower, no torpedo power. It's a D-tier de destroyer. D-tier destroyer. 
Honestly, I'm tempted to move up the Emerald. I'm gonna move it up one tier, just because this thing has... I, I, I've, I convinced myself with my smoke speech. I can convince myself with my smoke speech. It might be a squishy piece of shit that explodes incredibly easily. But hey, you get a heal and you get a smoke. Oh, you had Hydra as well. 4 came Hydra. Okay, I take it back. It's not that bad. I don't remember it had that much. I don't remember it had that much uh, shit going for it. Seven came torps that hit for 16k as well. Okay, I whoa, and it's got four x three of them. Really, four x three, six per side. 16, six per side, 16k torps. Okay, no, I I reconsidered. I reconsidered. Big time reconsider. This was, of course, the tragedy, the armor on it, and the citadel size. Oh god, and the size is the, the, the way the armor looks. The citadel size, oh my god, this was fucking tragic, man. Oh, Jesus. This is pretty tragic, not gonna lie. Paper thin armor. But yeah, no, Emerald, Emerald gets reconsidered. Emerald gets, honestly, all that utility. I feel like it's gonna rely on hands, but if you have hands... Maybe it's a B tier cruiser. The strongest elevation I've ever seen. The strongest elevation I've ever seen. From S to B, from D to B. It relies on hands though, yes. I feel like if you have no hands, you're gonna really suffer in this thing. If you have no hands, you're just gonna go instantly. But that's like, that's a lot of YOLO power. And and that's a lot of, like, it's hard to push into an emerald because there's a lot of situations in low tier rank where you have to push through uh, around a corner. And if the emerald is sitting there and the battleship pushes through, it can literally trade the BB with the torps. It can, it can force a trade, which will scare people from pushing into it because of all the torpedo power. And with the Hydra and Smoke, it's going to be hard to dislodge either. Yeah, no, no, that's, that's a B tier, that's a B tier. Okay, well, let's see. Uh, Viribus Unitus. Shit, I don't remember. There was a lot of talk about the ship a while ago. Wasn't any good. I remember, yeah, there's no CVs. We have to remember this. It's slow as shit. Viribus Unitus. That's how I read it in Finnish. Viribus, Viribus Unitus. Low HP, 12 guns. Lowest HP, highest broadside. Huh. The guns are smashers. Are they really? Let me check this. Let me check this. Let's check this shit. General. Okay, first of all, it does 20.5 knots. That's a yikes. It's slow as shit. 35.7k health, which is literally the lowest health at tier 5. Okay, so it's slow. Second slowest, lowest health pull by a significant margin. But it's got... 204k AP, which is pretty scary. 100k HE, that's decent-ish. 1.8 Sigma. 1.8 Sigma tier 5 with 12 guns. Third versus 45, but 1.8 Sigma with 12 guns. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Like other ships that have 1.8 Sigma generally have wonky turret setups, like fucking 5x2s like New York, or just like, which is terrible base dispersion. Or it's like... Uh, I don't know who else. I didn't know October Revolution has 1.8 Sigma as well. Interesting. Julius Cesar is the only one that has 1.9 Sigma. Interesting. The problem is the 35.7k health though. 35.7k health is brutal. Like I, I, like, I don't even know. What if I add tier 4s? 
it's still even if I add tier fours to my comparison chat, the the Vitibus United still has the lowest HP pool. It's got the lowest HP pool of tier four ships, and it's a tier five ship. Jesus, that's if I add tier threes, it's only the f it's the fourth worst health. Multiple tier threes have better health pools than it does at tier three. In fact, even Olomong tier 3s is one of the worst health pools. Like, that thing, it brings a fucking new meaning to squishiness. I think this thing is going to rely heavily on hands. And the lack of tankiness might be quite brutal if you have to push in. But it's, if it's got a lot of... It's Dreadnought type of armor. I think I'll throw it into B for the firepower alone. It's stealthy as well. I think it was very stealthy. Let me check the concealment. Detect. Yeah, it's it's uh, the third stealthier ship. The other ships that are, are stealthier is Der Flinger, which is one of the reasons I put the Der Flinger here. Der Flinger is hilarious. It outspots many of the cruisers. And of course, uh, Agincourt is also hilariously stealthy. These are the two only two stealthier ships than Viribus. I think we're going to put put it into B tier. Okay, uh, let's see. Celebus? What the fuck did Celebus do? Nothing? Die? Look like an idiot. That thing has a bigger five head than I do. But other than that, wasn't it like shit? What's the DPM on this thing? Celebus. Hmm. 121k. That's not too bad. Almost Königsberg DPM, but it has no range. There's no range. Um, it's very slow, 30.6 knots. It's not It's not that stealthy either. Same conceal as Furutaka. Yikes, it doesn't have a whole lot going for it. And it doesn't get the airstrike either. I think it's a D tier ship. Why would I play it? No, it doesn't get the airstrike yet either. You get get those at tier six. I think it's a D tier cruiser. I, I don't see why you would why would you bring that thing? No utility, no nothing. No DPM, no nothing. No torps, no airstrikes. Rio de Janeiro. Okay, what the hell did uh, what did that what was that ship a copy of? What was the gimmick with that? Oh, it was gun-focused edging court. That sounds kind of scary. I remember playing these quickly, briefly, and then like forgetting about them. Oh, it has the highest HEDPM by a mile of all battleships. Like literally huge fucking... It's, it has, Iron Duke has 118k HEDPM. Rio de Janeiro has 140k. 141k. So this, it, it's... Like, the, all the other ones sit at the 100 or below. This thing has 140, so literally 40% higher than, than basically all these others. 1.8 Sigma. Turtleverse, 60 seconds, pretty brutal. One of the reasons someone was like, why is Iron Duke down here? Where the fuck is Iron Duke? It should be down here somewhere. Here, why is Iron Duke C tier? Iron Duke Turtleverse is 72 seconds. That's why Iron Duke is down here. 72 seconds to turn your guns is a fucking nightmare. Hmm. Yeah, that's actually terrifying. 72k HE Alpha on the Rio de Janeiro as well. Which is like, once again, miles above all the other ones. Well, only 1.7 Sigma, which is kind of bad, but... Does 22 knots, it's slow. Concealment is an eh. Health is nice though, 48.4k. Quite tanky, quite tanky. Hmm. Yeah, I think this thing looks kind of terrifying. This thing looks kind of fucking scary. 
This thing looks kind of scary. Four heals. 14% healing. No spotter plan, but still. It looks like an S tier ship. I didn't think I'd add another S tier, but that, that HE seems brutal. Because there's not going to be any CVs to fuck you. You're going to run around with HE loaded. And shoot everything. Cruisers, BBs, DDs. Needs a special captain? Sure, but it still seems hella powerful. I mean, obviously by now you should have understood that the S tier can... Well, we can... Let's see. There you go. Small, small important details. Small important details. S tier. Okay. Let's see. What else do we have? Furtaka. Now that would probably be my only other A tier cruiser. If you're gonna play a cruiser, Furtaka is kinda cracked. Furtaka is kinda cracked. That thing has ridiculous armor for a tier 5 cruiser. Like, people don't really understand the armor of the Furtaka. It shits on other cruisers, it kinda shits on DDs, it can even push in and smash battleships. It's got really good torps, it's got really good a lot. Like, it, it used to be dog shit, then they buffed it. And then it just never stopped buffing it. They were like, Lamal, let's keep going. 203 guns, 15 second reload. Um, good H alpha, good AP alpha. 30.7k health. 10k M torpedoes that hit for 16k. And how many did you have? 2x4. Yeah, four, and there's 63 knots on both sides. You can drop 10k M torps. And 13.9 range, which sounds like weakness, but the concealment is 11.9. And look at the armor. Forty-eight millimeter deck armor. The noses are matchable, sure, but it's got twenty-five millimeter upper belt as well. And you got to remember, in order to overmatch twenty-five millimeter armor, you need three hundred and eighty millimeter guns. And uh, at tier five, there's no three hundred and eighty millimeter guns. They they literally don't exist. So, an angled Furtaka can literally bounce all the AP in the game, unless you get overmatch through the nose. Koenig? No, Koenig isn't 380. Pretty sure Koenig isn't 380. Okay, calm down. That thing testing some shit. And the Citadel itself, I think it was only in the middle here. Yeah, it was here in the middle. That's where the Citadel is. The Citadel can get smashed, don't get me wrong, you can get smashed. But you have a 16mm, was it layered thing going? Yeah, you got this. This is exposed. This can get absolutely smashed. If you give broadside, Furtaka will explode. But if you angle, this thing is hilariously tanky. And, oh yeah, and it, I think it had really good AP performance on the guns as well. Like, let's see. Where do I have... I think I had, like, surprisingly good gun performance. Because it's 203s. Yeah, it wasn't even much. Let's see. Mm. Okay, let's see. We can show you. Who would we compare it to? Um. Who would we compare it to? What's what's other tier five that has good pen? I don't really know, but I guess we can show it like this, just to give you an idea. For tier 5, this is for Taka Penetration. 140 millimeters at 10 kilometers. Basically, you can Citadel um, every cruiser you face at your max range. Basically. It, it, it's That's that's pretty much it. Shit, if you add Ibuki here, um, the difference between for Taka AP and Ibuki AP is actually not that large. These are A-hull guns? Are they? Oh shit. Oh shit, you actually have Ibuki guns normally. 
my bad even better you actually have identical um guns with the i didn't realize it put the stock guns so yeah tier 9 ap guns so and because they're 203 millimeter guns 203 divided by 14.3 it means you are match 14 millimeters and much of the armor at this tier is 13 on cruisers which basically means that this thing not only does it have tier 9 penetrate rebook penetration on these guns you are match other cruisers so yeah furtaka is one of the one of the few cruises that i'm gonna slap up here on the a tier that's good for furtaka how bad is it for ibuki it's pretty bad <laughs> it's pretty bad yahag what was yahag's gimmick this is kind of like a refresher course on the ships what was yahag's gimmick it was the torpedo things Torps with zero angles. Oh, centerline torps. It's fast. IGN light cruiser teaser. Does it have any damage? Hundred and four K, it's not too bad. Forty point nine game range. Okay. How speed fast is it? 35 knots base, that's pretty nice. Hmm. It's not too bad. What's the detect? 11k in base. Not that impressive. And a pretty impressive zero torpedo belt. Zero torpedo belt. Literally doesn't in any way mitigate them. It's got 12k in torps that hit for 17k. With with a very long reaction time. No armor. No armor, not a lot of stealth, not a lot of DPM. Does it have any health? Does it have any health? 25.7, one of the worst healths. No, it really doesn't. It really does not. Yikes. Like the only one, one of few ships that are less armor is the Mikoyan, but Mikoyan has uh, tier nine guns. Mikoyan has tier nine guns at tier five, so it's like Mikoyan is kind of magic AP. Honestly, I think it's D tier. I don't know why I'd play it. I don't know why I'd play it. It was given away for free. Mikoyan has 35mm on Citadel. Oh yeah, Mikoyan explodes. Don't get me wrong. That's why Mikoyan is only C tier. Okay, I like okay, I think I, I guess I need to explain. Um Okay, let's let's add what was the three we looked at? We looked at Furtaka. Let's add Furtaka here. Um let's add someone with better pen, like let's say uh Americans, Pensacola. That's got better pen than this thing, Pensacola. Pensacola guns are kind of infamous. Pretty good penetration here on the Pensacola. And then we'll add... Right, premium Mikoyan. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's Mikoyan. Like, um, you will Citadel battleships at close ranges. Mikoyan is like these are 180s, but they, they just have magic things going. The, sh the shelf lifetime is also magic. It's got very few of them, and the sh the hull is shit. And I think overall the ship is shit. Don't get me wrong. I think Mikoyan is a pretty fucking shitty ship, but like like the guns are just Stalinian. They're Stalinian fucking magic. They they <laughs> they like they make no fucking sense. These guns like we can add Baltimore with super heavy AP. And Baltimore is still losing to, to, to Mikoyan. You gotta understand, Baltimore has like DM guns, just so you know. Like, this is, this is DM guns. And this is Mikoyan. So, 
Yeah, no, Mikoyan, Mikoyan gets C only because of the guns. Everything else about the ship is dog shit. It, it will lose, like, you go, you go nose in with a cruiser against this thing, and you will just blow it out of the water easily. But if you get broadside, he can sit that LU across the map. So that's, that's the trade-off. It's like a little fucking Slava tier 5, except much less effective. Soviet fantasy guns. Yes. Congo, Congo, Congo. Hmm, Congo is strong. Is Congo A or is Congo B? That's a hard one. Congo is a good ship. Congo is a good ship, but Congo has some significant weaknesses. Um, it's fast, it's fairly not, it's giga fast, that's great. But I think it has the worst conceal of all tier 5 battleships. And I think the gun performance was also kind of sussy. Kind of sussy. Mm. APDPM is second worst. 1.8 Sigma, that's pretty okay. Turtwurst is pretty fucking slow. It's fast, it's a lot of health, but it's got no armor, and it's spotted from the moon, and it's honestly, it's very squishy. I think I'll put it into B. I think it's a solid B, but I don't think it deserves to be an A compared to some of these other BBs here. I think, yeah, you think the overpen issue was is actually a real thing on it, because it has... Uh, the fuse threshold is 59 millimeters. Yeah, the fuse threshold is 59 millimeters, which is actually pretty fucking brutal. Oh, and the, ar the fuse arming threshold is uh, 33 milliseconds. I actually didn't know this, but did you guys know that the October Revolution has a 10 millisecond fuse time? October Revolution has short fuse AP on a battleship. I actually didn't fucking know that. I had no idea. It has 10 millisecond uh, fuse time compared to 33 millisecond on the other battleships. The only one that has the same is the Der Flinger, which is one of the reasons Der Flinger is here. Uh, and uh, the Koenig actually has it as well. The Koenig still overpens because of the fuse. The Koenig still just suffers. But I actually didn't know that. That's kind of crazy. I had no idea. It makes it better. Of course it makes it a lot better. I mean, uh, you don't need the long fuse arming threshold at low tiers because you're shooting so many thin, small ships. So you want the short fuse. I didn't know it had a short fuse. That's pretty crazy. That probably explains why you sometimes why you suffer with Citadel and some other BBs, but you do a lot of consistent pen damage. I didn't know that. I actually have no idea. That's pretty pretty crazy. Well, today we're learning. I'm learning new things today. This is this is a good day. When I'm learning new things in World of Warships, that's good. That is a good. Okay. Now then, now then, now then, now then. Hill. <laughs> what is Hill besides a shitty Nicholas? I don't remember. What else was it? Wasn't it basically a Nicholas? Am I missing? Did I forget something? Actually, it's a, is it a better Nicholas? It has more DPM. He's a better Nicholas. Less torps, more guns. That's pretty good. What's the conceal? Does it, what, what else does it trade off? It has worse dispersion than the Nicholas. Nicholas actually, I didn't know this either. Did you guys know that Nicholas, unlike all the other tier 5 DDs, all the other tier 5 DDs have a 2.0 Sigma, but the Nicholas has a 2.2 Sigma. I had no idea. I didn't even know that. I actually had no idea. But Hill has only a 2.0 Sigma. But Hill has the highest DPM of all tier 5 destroyers. The highest DPM at 112. And it's a significant margin above everyone else. In fact, Nicholas has 108. Gremiesh has 91. And Hill sits at 112. So if you bring a Hill to a battle you're going to expect to have about a 20% advantage in DPM compared to basically everyone else. That is no small advantage to have. That is quite significant. Health-wise, Hill has a bit less health, 12k, 12.1k, not too bad. Speed is 37.5, which is actually faster than Nicholas. That's not bad at all. Concealment is 7.2. That's pretty terrible. 
that is actually the second worst concealment at tier 5. The only one that's worse is Podvoyski. So what? Let's see here with concealment expert 6.4. So you have you you have you like a bit of health and you have pretty terrible conceal, but in return you have a lot of gun power. I feel like these are things that you can maybe play around, but it's not necessarily going to be easy if there is a player with hands on the enemy team. Basically, what turn ba exactly what turn based A said. If you if you're playing against poor players, it's going to shit on them very very quickly. But if you fight against someone who's any good, like someone who's sitting angled against you in one of these stealthy destroyers and starts kiting when you push in, you're just going to explode because you have no health pool to push in with. Hmm. I think it might be an A tier, depending on hands. Depending on the level of hands involved. If you're good at DDs, it's an A tier. If you struggle to stay alive in DDs, it's probably going to be B, maybe even C. Like, it's gonna, this is a ship that's going to scale hard with how good you are at playing destroyers. It's going to scale extremely hard with that. You don't get that much DPM compared to the Nicholas. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at as well. You're, you're right on that. Maybe it's actually... Nicholas has 108. This one has 112. Maybe we put it into B with the Nicholas. It's kind of like a... I don't know. It's kind of like side grade. I'm not sure if I, because I don't want to put this above the Nicholas, because I'm uh, 7.2 concealed versus 6.5 on the Nicholas, it, it is fucking significant. And uh, yeah, honestly, Nicholas having six, oh sorry, Nicholas having 6.5 and this having 7.2. 700 meters base conceal is a huge gap. It handles better, but Nicholas, Nicholas is very slightly faster. No, sorry, very slightly slower, half a knot. Nicholas has a much better power to weight ratio though, which means it'll accelerate better. Nicholas handles better. Well, it's kind of a trade-off. It has faster rudder shift, but hill turns better. They're kind of honestly even. They're even. I'd say I think I think Nicholas might be the easier ship to play. Might even be the better ship to play. I think Nicholas is better. I I don't mind giving up. I don't mind giving up like uh, 4k HE DPM to get a thousand more health and 700 conceal. That's the easiest trade I've ever made. That's the easiest fucking trade I've ever made. I'll happily make that trade. In fact, for Tech Tree ship, Nicholas is probably up here. I think Nicholas might be one of the better Tech Tree destroyers. It's a gunboat. It's a stealthy, well handling gunboat. At, yeah, I think probably one of the better tech tree ships. I think Nicholas deserves A, and Hill is like B, because yeah, you get more DPM, but the trade offs to get more DPM are too brutal. Hello, mid-tier American DDs in general are pretty damn good. Yeah, generally they suffer from concealment, but Nicholas' concealment isn't actually bad. Like, it's not bad at all. You have 6.5, which means you got better concealment than Visby, Acosta, Sirocco, Janvey, and Gremiashi. You outspot all of them. And then you, of course, outspot all the super gun boats like Jaguar, Maestrale, Podvoisky. You outspot all of them. In fact, the only thing that you don't outspot is the... T-22, which is surprisingly stealthy. That's probably the only thing it has going for it. Uh, and uh, Ohotnik and then the IGN ships. The IGN ships dominate concealment, but they kind of lose in everything else. 5.9 conceal is nice. Yeah, I think Nicholas here. Nicholas deserves the A tier here. Marblehead. Marblehead, I think, is the highest DPM cruiser uh, at tier 5. Uh, it, you you get what an extra gun I think compared to Omaha, which puts you at like the top HEDPM. Is that right? Let me check. 
Yeah, Marblehead, 158k. It puts you 8k above Omaha. Put you 8k above Omaha. And Omaha we have where? Tier C tier? It's got a lot of DPM though. I'm not, I'm not sure if Omaha doesn't maybe deserve to be B. But I think Marblehead deserves to be in here with the Omaha as well. Because, uh, yes, it has more DPM, but uh, it loses, I think, 1.3 kilometers of range. So that kind of suffers. Yeah, and honestly, I think, yeah, the, I think the Omaha gun placement, I think the DPM values might be a bit misleading because you can't really use all your Omaha guns at once. They, they kind of spread all around the ship, like I, sh I can show you. This is why people, when people talk about DPM numbers, oftentimes they're theoretical DPM numbers, but in actuality, good luck getting to use all your guns when you got like uh, casemate guns. Now this ship has casemate guns, meaning you got literally guns sticking out here and guns sticking out here. So yeah, you can't like use these guns. This is not the fully upgraded. This one you can probably use, but like it's it's tricky to use all your guns. Marvel Tor got longer torps, yeah, but they're slow as shit, aren't they? Torpedoes. Marblehead's torpedoes are 49 knots of speed, and they do 6.2k damage. Omaha's torpedoes do 12k damage, and they are 56 knots. So I would say Omaha's torps are actually better. Because uh, you can use Omaha Torps for YOLOing, whereas Marblehead Torps, you can shove up your ass. That's basically the only pleasure you'll, you'll get from using them. Yeah, that would be about right. Merman's got here for better guns in general. Yeah, that would probably be my rough tier list. My rough, my rough tier list. Sure, we might change some things around eventually. We might do A or B, but when people, at least this will save people from asking, hey, Flamo, what do you think about Texas in ranked? And I'm, I say, well, do you want to play a 20.5 knots moving AA battleship in a game mode that has no carriers? And I, I would say that's probably a pretty fucking shitty choice. Yeah. The S tier, of course, we replace the S with a dollar sign because. That's literally the tier five. <laughs> that's, that's how it works. That's how it works. Are you going to do this for tier seven? We could do this for tier seven at some point. We could do it for tier seven at some point. But yeah, this is this is not random battle. This is ranked tier list. Tier five ranked tier list. For randoms, it's a very different story because then there's these annoying bullshit planes that are permanently spotting you and there's tier seven radars missing with your fun smoke gimmicks and yeah. This was a long ass fucking tier list, but hey, we got it done. What's T22 Hydro Range? That's a good question. I, don't, I think the low tier ones have pretty dog shit though. Let me check though, it's a stealthy ship. Does it even get Hydro? If it does, it's probably a 4km Hydro. 4km Hydro, yeah. Eh, it's not that bad, but it's that's hard to use offensively. Because ultimately the problem comes when you get close enough to hydra someone, how do you kill them? You're 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 literally playing a tugboat. You're literally playing a fucking tugboat. How do you kill someone in this thing? That's the problem. Hope your team kills them, I guess. But honestly, if playing gold has told taught me anything, expecting your team to do the smart thing in rank. Good luck with that one. Dude, what, what is this? Like, it's literally a fishing boat. It's a fishing trawler. Like, oof. Just oof. Oof. Hmm. Wow, that was a long-ass fucking tier list. Goddamn. 